Hello, everyone. Hi, how are you? Um, firstly, I would like to say thank you for Kazubaida for interpreting for me. We have a friend from Penang Deaf Association here with us, and I'm very happy to welcome you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Disa, and I'm from Indonesia. I'm the founder of Finger Talk Cafe and Finger Talk Car Wash and also Workshop. I also employ more than 30 deaf employees in our organization, and all of them are deaf. I talk to them using sign language every day when I meet them, and I think I have the best job in the world. Why? Because I really love signing. And to prove to you that I'm learning sign language and that I'm trying to communicate with them using sign language, I will try to redo my introduction using sign language. If you allow me to do sign language with my introduction. And if you don't understand, don't worry, we have the slides to assess you on what I'm saying. I'm from Indonesia, and this is a sign for Indonesia, because it's our flag. Car wash, workshop, and all 30 employees are deaf. Every day, I meet them, and I sign to them. And I think I have the best job in the world. Why? Because I love signing. Thank you. So before we got into the reason why I sign, I would like to invite you guys, because we're here in Penang, might as well learn one or two words, sign language, uh, from sign language of this beautiful, beautiful town. And do you know that sign language from Malaysia is this? This is Malaysia. So you have to know that. Now I'm teaching you. Whoa. And also the sign language for Penang is very, very unique. It's the tree. So it's like this, and then it's the branch of the tree. It's the Penang tree, yeah. And yesterday, I was walking around the Penang Road, and I tried a nice bowl of chendol. And guess what the sign of chendol is? It's the soup, and then... <laughs> I was asking Kazubaida earlier why, because he was like, you know, it reminds you like runny nose. <laughs> And sign language does reminds you of a lot of things, of the culture, of how you associate symbols and how you connect with people using gesture. And I would like to share with you why I sign. First, because I really love languages. I really love learning languages, and I learn English, I learn Japanese, Spanish, and I'm currently learning Arabic. And I feel that language is a way for us to connect with people in a more personal level. I really enjoy the look on people's face when I meet them and say a few words in their native language. Like when I was in India, I worked with these children, underprivileged children from Dalit Kas, or the untouchables. Not many of them know basic words of English, they don't really speak Hindi as well because they have their own native language. I only speak English, I don't know Hindi. I'm not that smart to know Hindi yet. So I tried my best to connect with them. And they're trying to teach me how to say basic words in the classroom. They came in, they're pointing out doors, window, chairs, and they were saying it in their native language. I was trying really hard to understand and memorizing it so that the next day I came out into the class and pointing at the same thing using their native language. Of course, I made 
pronunciation mistakes, grammar wrong all over the place. But the most important part is actually I get to connect with them in a very, very personal level. They see that I was trying. And that's very important to create a great connection with people. Which brings me to my second point. I have a story with you to share, actually, before we get into this um, point, is that one of the deepest connections that I felt was when I was 10 years old. I met a 60-year-old grandpa. We went to a nursing home. He was in the nursing home for a charity event, so I was really excited coming to him as a 10-year-old. I was very active in telling him, I'm Dissa, I'm from uh, this neighborhood, I would like to talk to you. And he looked at me and he was like, I can't hear you. I'm deaf. And instead of walking away from me, this 60-year-old man, the first deaf person I've ever met in my life, sat down and actually took my hand and taught me how to sign and spell my name in Indonesian Sign Language. It's D-I-S-S-A. I was like, whoa. It's a new language, this is so cool. I don't have to shout to him across the room, I can just like, yeah. And that's what get me realized that sign language is a very, very unique tool for us to talk to people from different community, to meet the deaf, and also not only deaf friends that we actually know or deaf friends from the same country, but sign language also helps me to connect with people beyond borders. I would like to share a story, another story. Um, I had a chance to actually work in Singapore a couple years back. And in Singapore, I learned Singapore Sign Language. Fun fact, sign language is not universal. Here you have Bahasa Isyarat Malaysia. In Indonesia, you have Indonesian Sign Language or Bisindo, Bahasa Isyarat Indonesia. In Singapore, of course, you have SGSL, or Singapore Sign Language. Because I was in Singapore, I want to learn that. And I learned um, SGSL and I wanted to practice. One day, I went to a cafe and I saw this group of deaf people. They were signing and signing and signing to each other. And I really, really, really wanted to come up to them and sign. I wanted to practice. But only some of them look Singaporean, and I wasn't sure if they would understand what I would say, uh, sign to them. But I took the risk of being misunderstood, and I just come to them and say, Hi, my name, D-I-S-S-A. My sign name is Dissa. You're from where? And they looked at me, and they were like, Whoa, you can sign. One person come to me and said, I'm from Spain. Another said, I'm from UK. And another person said, oh, thank God, she's from Singapore. So she understood what I'm saying. So that, when I realized that sign language really brings me into an international community and let me communicate with them across races, nationalities, and beyond borders. Which brings me to my third point. Signing helps me making a difference one cafe at a time. This is Finger Talk. We set it up in 2015, and it's the first deaf cafe in Indonesia. But the story actually started when I was packing my bag and volunteering to Nicaragua, a country in Central America. I was volunteering with grassroots organization, working with underprivileged children as an English teaching assistant and also working with the NGO as a volunteer accountant. It was really fun. I learned Spanish from them. But little did I know that the trip would actually change my life forever. I was living in the town of Granada. You have to mention it like that. It's the town of Granada. And in Granada, there is a beautiful cafe called Cafe de las Sonrisas, or Cafe of Smiles. And in this cafe, all of the people who work there are deaf. So when I ordered the menu, I used the card on the table to order what I want to eat. They have a cheat sheet. And I was very inspired 
by what the owner is doing, by what the staff is doing, because now I see with sign language, they actually providing chances and opportunity for deaf people to work and to get more opportunities, more equal opportunities in the society. I was really blown away and then I decided I want to go back to Indonesia making my own differences and I want to learn Indonesian Sign Language. So in 2015, we opened Finger Talk. This is our first cafe. We started with five people at the cafe and we also have workshops. At this workshop, we let the deaf create Indonesian batik, bags, pouches, and we sell it to our customers, all made by our deaf crew members. We also have car wash. And in Indonesia, everybody has cars, not everyone, but many people has cars, and to wash your cars, you don't need your hearing, so we employ deaf people as well. And we have managed, when we opened the first time, we have managed to get 400 cars the first month, all done by our deaf crew. They're really amazing, and I'm really proud of them. We also meet deaf people from all around Indonesia, and in Indonesia, also in Malaysia as well, every cities and every provinces have their own unique sign language. And they really let us learn, us hearing people, keep learning new signs every day. Like in Indonesia, do you know how we sign WhatsApp? Because 10 years ago, the word WhatsApp, it's nowhere in the dictionary. But now we have to sign that to people. This is how you sign WhatsApp. <laughs> WhatsApp. And this is how you sign Facebook. Yeah, because it's your face and this is your book, right? Got <laughs> I have to make sure. And in Indonesia, that's how we sign Facebook. Um, and we also meet deaf people and deaf customers and also hearing customers who are very interested in learning the language. And I realized one day my hearing friends came to me and said, I get this. I can, I can order my food um, to the deaf girl. She doesn't want me to help her with um, the ordering. So she walked up to my crew. She's hearing, so she just learned sign language on the spot. And she said, I want to order onion ring. This is O. I want to order onion ring. She just said onion ring and hoping my crew could actually guess what she was mouthing. Ten minutes later, my crew came back with Oreo shake. <laughs> That happened, and I was very happy that my friend didn't, you know, scold my crew. She was very happy. She was like, okay. Then I told her to keep um, learning sign language, and she managed to order, get her onion ring after the Oreo shake. So she got lunch that day. It was really good. But not only Indonesian people are very interested in learning sign language. Sign language has also helped me meeting deaf from all around the world. In this picture, there is a friend from UK who speaks uh, British Sign Language. There is a friend from um, America who signs American Sign Language. And I also have the experience to meet deaf from Saudi Arabia. I don't sign Arabic Sign Language at all. I just use what I know and my gesture and I was telling them what I do with finger talk that there are deaf people who are working with us and that we're supporting equal opportunity in Indonesia because of this talk we managed to work together and we're about to make some projects together in Indonesia in the coming 2017 Inshallah. Also, I feel that sign language has shaped me to be who I am right now. It, given me, it has given me the opportunity to meet people from different countries and creating different projects. I have friends from Botswana in Africa and Kazakhstan in Central Asia who are going to work together with me to create their deaf cafe in their respective countries. 
And why I keep doing this? Why do I work with deaf people? Because I think deaf people are very inspiring and they create inspiring experience. I think sign language has helped me connect with them universally. And it's really, really fascinating because something that we think very interesting for me and something that we think can be a burden or a barrier in communication could actually create an even deeper connection. And if you don't know where to find deaf friends, don't worry. Today, I went praying at the mosque at the back of this building, and I met the guy who cleaned the mosque is actually a deaf guy. He doesn't know how to sign, but we manage to communicate using gesture. He told me that he is deaf since he's a baby, and it was a long, long time ago, and now he's cleaning up the mosque, and he's really happy about that. You don't need to know hard sign language. You just have to go out there and be yourself. And lastly, why I sign? Because it gets me the chance, an opportunity to stand here, to be in front of you, meeting amazing people like you guys and also amazing role model like President Barack Obama. Oops. The second person I want to introduce is uh, Disa uh, Adanisa. Where's... So, after her experience uh, in America through Waisili, uh, she said, when I came back to Indonesia, I realized I love the United States, not because of the fancy stuff, but because of the people and because of their kindness. And so I want you to know that uh, the American people feel the same way about you. Uh, but it was actually Disa's time volunteering in Nicaragua a few years ago that it set her on a new course. Uh, one day she happened across uh, a cafe for the deaf. And at first she wanted to learn a new language, uh, in this case the sign language spoken by the waiters and waitresses. She came to realize that the cafe was a great way to empower people with a disability. She visited schools for the deaf, made deaf friends. Last year, Disa opened you know, the Finger Talk Cafe in Indonesia to provide job opportunities for the deaf community there. And I've been told great things about the cafe because my receptionist, uh, as you know in the White House, uh, a wonderful young woman named Leah, uh, she visited earlier this year. She is deaf and she is the receptionist at the White House. So when you come visit the White House, she's the first person you meet. And she signs, and uh, she said, "You know, she wanted me to tell you how proud she is of you." So, congratulations! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.